everybody. I'm Matt Lindbergh, news editor for the Montrose Daily Press. Welcome to In the Newsroom. Today our guest is Bruce Grigsby, uh, an opinion columnist for us at the Daily Press. How are you doing, Bruce? Doing well, thanks. Thanks for coming on. Sure, happy to do it. Everyone who's out there has probably been your student or knows <laughs> a student you've had. Uh, can you talk about just uh, your teaching career? Because you were at Montrose High School for, for many years. 37. Yeah, came in, um, came in the summer of 71. Taught there through 2008 when I started working with you. Um, a few other things. What was uh, your favorite part about teaching? Um, well, the the standard answer is is the, your students, and and that's certainly a big part of it. I think um, great great kids over the years that are now some of them are now in their mid 50s. Um, my first students are all grandparents. And some of them retired after good careers already. But uh, I'd say it's a combination of the students, the, the colleagues, um, and the material that I got to teach. I was very, very lucky to teach uh, a curriculum that I was really interested in myself. What, uh, speaking of curriculum, what was the, uh, the most exciting portion to teach to your students? You know, the flagship part of it is probably the Shakespeare that I that I taught. Um, I I was asked, Jim McTiernan was the social studies uh, chairperson when I first came, a uh, fine teacher, and uh, he knew that I had virtually a minor in philosophy and asked, he, he thought it would be a good idea to start a philosophy course at the high school, and asked me to do that, which I did, and um, that was, that was a really neat opportunity. At the time that we did it, I think somebody said there are only uh, fewer than 10 in the entire state. And actually, um, we developed a pretty good relationship with the philosophy department at, the, at CU Boulder and had some exchanges, had some of their people come and sit in with us. And actually, even, they even conducted some summer philosophy camps that we sent some students to. So that was a good thing. Now uh, you also alluded to earlier that uh, when I first got here in 2008, you were also here. We were the, the sports team. Yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting thing. I think um, some of that probably uh, we blame some of that on on Will Woody, uh, who knew that I had gotten out of teaching, and um, of course his dad was a publisher at the time, and Steve kind of thought the idea that well. Bruce has been around sports for a long time and knows the community in the area, uh, not only having coached, but also having officiated in the area. I thought maybe um, a little time on my hands, maybe I could contribute a little bit. Anything uh, that you enjoyed covering the most? I know we had you doing a bunch of different sports. Um, basketball and baseball are the two areas that I um, were, were closest to based on officiating. I refereed basketball for 22 seasons, and by the time it was over 34 seasons of baseball. So I knew those two sports from being a current participant, actually, on the court and on the field with the kids. Um, originally, my, my top interest was in football. Uh, played football in high school. Wanted to play baseball, but couldn't make the team. And um, actually coach football as an assistant varsity coach for seven seasons. Um, but, but the basketball and baseball were the two that I, I felt the strongest current relation to. And nowadays you, uh, you still help out with sports occasionally, but you also have your own opinion column that comes out every other Friday. Right. So next Friday you'll see Just Thinking in the paper. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about just uh, how you go about putting that column together? Okay. Um, probably the first thing I do in putting that together is drive my wife crazy. Uh, I listen to a lot of news. I'll get home and I'll, I'll turn on the news. She doesn't like to dwell on the news and all the negativity in the news as much as I do. So I'll, I get um, exiled to the basement. So I'll go down to the basement and watch the news, and, and particularly um, opinion news. And um, I think what, what I would like to believe, and I think there are some people out there that would strongly disagree, but what I'd like to believe about what uh, I've done 
is to try to give a little balance to some of the things that I've found to be a little bit over the top or, or uh, things that just stretch common sense and credulity. And, and when I come across something that I think is um, so extreme that it, it defies common sense, I try to like, I try to write something that will put a little counterweight to that. You working on your column for next week already? Uh, yeah, I actually I submitted, I submitted one to Mike and to you. In addition to the one that ran last week, um, and I I think what I'm going to do is tweak that a little bit. Re I'm going to work on that some more. Um, I want to do a little more, a little more background research on on some issues there. Basically, um, what I have in mind on that one is how we've come to a position where it seems like um, minority perspectives can dominate the political situation. Um, the, the most obvious thing is that in the Senate, in the United States Senate anymore, the, the constant issue of a filibuster, which doesn't even have to be a, um, a person actually on the floor speaking can pretty much block anything. So the, the current situation of having to have a 60 vote supermajority in the Senate seems to be a, a, a situation that's that's new, that's current, and, and bothersome. Well, Bruce, we appreciate you coming on. Sure. Talking. Everybody out there, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.